Hey guys, it's been so long since the last video, but I've just been so busy. Anyway, uh, I've been ordering at a place called Easy EDA for a couple months now, and uh, I would kind of like to go over the PCB quality and some other issues with Easy EDA. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because Easy EDA is currently like by far the cheapest place to buy prototype PCBs. And even like small production runs, they, they go up to a couple thousand PCBs per order. And they seem to have incredibly competitive prices. And also, contrary to most like prototype PCB Chinese manufacturers, Easy EDA has relatively good ordering options, although we'll go into exactly what that entails later. Now first, let's just take a look at a bunch of PCBs and, and see what the quality is like. Well, here we have the uh, by far the easiest PCB in my batch. Uh, this is just a two layer, 1.6 millimeter thickness, green solder mask PCB. Uh, a couple of things you can uh, evaluate PCB quality on is, I find that silkscreen quality is a great indicator. Uh, we can actually see very good silkscreen quality. These are uh, 0.15 millimeters, so that is like eight thou no sorry that's six thou silkscreen thickness and you can see the cover is good another way of uh seeing whether they put some some uh, attention to detail as well here you can see they try their best to put their own trace markings under the connector here there's a usb connector that is slightly off board so in the end application you won't be able to see it here we have a couple of mouse bites so this is a place to break off the PCB. And this is a good place to uh, see what the registration accuracy is. You can see it is pretty much perfectly spot on. So the registration um, is how accurate the different parts are positioned relative to each other. So you see the word outline here where it's milled out versus this first hole of the mouse bite and then on the other side you see that this is pretty much the same distance it's it's very well matched so the uh, board outline is usually the worst uh, tolerance part where they mill it out that's like uh, usually specified as 0.3 millimeters or sometimes even 0.5 millimeters accuracy this is definitely better than that on sharp corners like um, Sharp corners between high fill load and low fill load, so with uh, lots of copper versus no copper. On relatively underperforming processes, you will see like a visible edge where the copper thickness is kind of deteriorated compared to the rest, and you kind of do see that. You see that this edge of the copper area here is slightly darker, and that means um, that it's you can see this with the naked eye very well the copper is is visibly a little bit thinner this is also important because if you do for instance impedance controlled pcbs you want to be sure that for instance this trace is a certain thickness a certain height above the substrate so that the like the the resistance well the dynamic resistance so um the effective resistance at very high frequencies is constant and some some defined value it does look decent like the uh, everything has very sharp corners it's obviously well etched um, but i'm not quite sure that this would actually be a good impedance control process now they don't offer a like higher precision process for impedance control prototypes so i would I would think that this probably won't be usable for stuff like PCI Express. Although, again, I'll go into that later. This is another relatively simple PCB. Here is a large footprint for an ESP8266, and sure enough, uh, they put their own markings under there. So. Now, on this PCB, there is one big mistake, and that is this milled edge here. Uh, I was very surprised to see this. This is not a singular case even. I can I can show you. So here is a board from the same batch obviously and here we see like in the same location 
well, slightly different. Here we see that it actually infringed upon a trace, even though I observed their own uh, design rules on the distance from the edge. And also here we can see that the uh, milling is substantially offset. It's uh, way too wide here and it's too narrow here. It's right upon this trace. You can see that the routing is kind of wonky, it's going back and forth, and again we see some alignment issues, this time it's the other way around. And yeah, another one like uh, little bites taken out, in case you thought, well this is just on that batch. This is uh, from a completely different batch, manufactured I think almost two months later. Uh, do I have a date code on this? Apparently, yeah, uh, April instead of March. Here, uh, there's like a substantial error, and uh, this is not a break-off tab, they do full routing. Uh, it's not like they just had a dull bit in their milling router at that day, and uh, they switched it out and it was all fine. No, they, they actually have kind of poor routing quality overall. I kind of rely on uh, good routing quality. Uh, I've never had trouble with routing like this before, and I, I do observe only like half a millimeter of uh, distance between the routing and board copper, but uh, maybe if I'm ordering from Easy EDA, I should uh, adjust my design rules to keep a little more, bit more space between the edge of the board and the copper layers. Now, going on to something completely different. Here is a uh, very, very, very tiny board, uh, which is actually four layer, and this shows to me the the real added value of easy EDA. They can manufacture this, this is a 0.8 millimeter, even though it's has, thickness is 0.6 millimeter, I'll go into that later. Uh, a 0.8 millimeter four layer board and uh, it's a transformer, like a, a flat transformer, primary and secondary. Now what you can see here is that this is like a better process in some way. Yeah, the trace quality, the edges are really, really good. And alignment is great. There's there's nothing I can really say. This is almost production quality. Uh, their, their routing is definitely done with kind of coarse bits. This is probably a one millimeter, maybe even a 1.5 millimeter bit. Uh, instead of what you would expect for these uh, these tiny, very thin boards. Now one thing I have to remark, these vias, like only one is properly tinted, the other ones are still uh, mostly open on one side, um, and like on the other side there's no tinting at all. Again, something just to take into account, because for instance if we go to this board, on this board, suddenly all the vias are properly tinted, and the ones that I don't tint, well, they are bare, as they should be, but on the other side, they're just fine, they are tinted. Not 100% sure what is going on there, but um, yeah, whatever. Just to take this into account, in this case, uh, it does go into a transformer core and that might electrically connect this, so uh, I had to put tape on here before I assembled the uh, transformer. But that's, that's fine, I had to do that anyway because solder mask is not a reliable insulator. Now, you've seen this uh, already. This is a four layer board and I actually did a proper stack up. So if you, if you make boards um, professionally, usually if you send it to a board house, you do this. You make a little window, so a little cutout in both the top and bottom solder mask. And you just put a number in sequence on your layers. This is so the board house knows that this is the top layer the two is the first inner layer, the three is the second inner layer, and the four is the bottom layer. You can see that it's actually an inverted four on this layer, and it's, it's been um, hot air solder leveled. Uh, as I said, this is, this is a different batch again. Uh, this is from... Uh, yeah, this is the April batch again, 04. Uh, in this case, the routing is perfect. Uh, I've got a couple of these boards, uh, looked at all of them, there's like no mistakes at all. Um, the alignment is perfect, so you can see this uh, here, all the copper layers, or all the layers have uh, some copper on it except for uh, this bottom layer. They're all perfectly aligned. The via tenting uh, also means that 
as should be. The silk screen is laid over, so sometimes manufacturers make this mistake that they assume that all vias are untinted, even if they are tinted, and they cut out the mask for the um, uh, for the silk screen, so you cannot have text over vias. But in this case, it went just fine. There's a little routing. Oh, actually, well, there's a, a tiny little bit of a nick here. So I guess there is a very small running error. I don't fault them for this. This is a tiny board again. Um, yeah, pretty much perfect, like a USB-C layout. Uh, I did some um, impedance matching for the high-speed uh, lines, and yes, this does actually sustain 5 gigahertz. So I guess we can go on to a couple of other boards. Yeah, here is an older board again. This is... Uh, my February batch. Here we can kind of uh, see the, the reason I took this is to show you the um, the silk screen cutouts here that they do and they do seem to take a little bit more margin than I expected. So this A3 is a zero and this 13 is almost illegible. Uh, I kind of expected that they would only cut out the um, the actual annular ring here, but they took a little bit more space. So. This here, this routing, that's correct. <laughs> this is how I designed it, because I had to uh, design an extra trace here. And on the other side, this is the, uh, the first time that I saw this happening. So this here's a via, and they cut out the silk screen mask which they haven't done anywhere else like here is a little via uh, a little bit weird uh, because here they do just fine and they actually didn't quite fully tint it so weird if you see anything that I uh, that I miss just tell me in the comments so this is something I really like about them they do uh, 0.4 millimeters at almost no extra cost yeah, so uh, this is a very large 1.6 millimeter uh, thickness four layer board. It is uh, 170 by 100 millimeters. This is one of those areas where I was a little bit disappointed with their web application. So this is a four layer board, they did the correct stack up. I ordered this with two ounce copper uh, because this is an LLC power supply, very very high power, su power supply. Uh, this just all needs to be very thick and it is, it is a very heavy board. On the website, you use this form where you you choose what kind of board you want from uh, drop downs. So you can choose the the board thickness and the copper thickness and all that those things. And in the calculator itself, you can choose all kinds of things that they cannot manufacture. So uh, at first, this board used used six six um, design rules. So the traces were th six mils and the trace spacing was six mils. And they came back to me and said, well, in two ounce copper, we cannot do that. This is, I, I know that most board manufacturers don't do two ounce copper, so extra thick copper, with such thin uh, traces. But it seemed from their calculator that they could do it, so I ordered it, it accepted it, and then they came back in an email and said, oh no, we cannot do this, you have to modify your design. So I modified it to 8.8 uh, to eight, eight mil, which they accepted. But yeah, uh, that happened. And the same thing happened with um, uh, some of my other boards. Like for instance, this one, the windings. Uh, I wanted to uh, order 0.6 millimeters four layer because they seemed to be offering that. But they came back to me and said, well, the minimum thickness for four layer is 0.8 millimeters. Well, I was a little bit annoyed uh, that they they seem to offer more than they can actually manufacture. Now, otherwise, this board is uh, is fine. There's there's really nothing that can go wrong here. Uh, very happy how this came out. Uh, a little bit disappointed in the silk screen here and there. They they are good, but on these very large boards, you see that their masks do go out of alignment slightly. Uh, to be expected for a prototype pool, though. Yeah, so I hope uh, this video was helpful to anyone intending to order at Easy EDA. I tried pretty much everything. Uh, tried the uh, four layer, uh, the very thin boards, very large boards, very small boards, 
they do pretty much everything. It's um, compared to the others, so for instance, Elecro, uh, IT Studio, Seed Studio, uh, Chinese piece of media manufacturers, it's about on par. You really cannot go that wrong with it. So as long as you make sure that you <laughs> look at their routing, and as long as you take a look at their wiki, they actually have a wiki where they say what they can manufacture. Don't take the calculator for granted. The things in the calculator are not necessarily what they can manufacture. Now one last thing I would like to say, and uh, I, I don't want to uh, say I'm spiteful in any way because they are very cheap. For instance, I got this, I got a couple of boards that were different from what I ordered and I paid for what I ordered. And sometimes uh, those boards were substantially more expensive than the boards that I actually got. So for instance, this this here board, the 0.6 millimeter four layer was like uh, 60 or $70 and I got a 0.8 millimeter and that was actually just like 20 or $30. Do I get my money back for that? And yeah, 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 we'll, uh, we'll refund you the money. And they didn't. And then I did the second order and I had another board that was ordered differently. And again, they didn't properly refund my order. I'm not too stoked about that, to be honest. I am still in the process of trying to get my money back for those things. They are still cheaper than any of the other uh, offerings, but that is not good customer service. So uh, I fully expect it to be refunded at some point. The, the rest of their service is fine, but yeah, that's just uh, something to take into account. Just don't order things that they cannot manufacture because you might be waiting on your money for quite a while. So anyway, that's uh, my review of EasyDA's PCBs. I uh, hope you enjoyed and see you in the next one.